What's uh, what's going on with your beard these days? A lot. I don't want to talk about it. My mom's here to visit, so I had to trim it a little bit. It's, she it's some, pathetic. Yeah. It's terrible. I know. Yeah. Are you ready to focus? Yeah, yeah, I'm focused. I run a remote team. We just hired somebody else. Right? At any point in time, we have five or six people kind of working for us. And growing up, I had already always heard that, and I don't really like the way this is phrased, but this was a term. You don't complain down. I also have had leaders that I worked for that were great in many capacities. So my critiquing them in this context is no critique of them overall, but they didn't always really let you in. And that lent itself to a certain mystique. You didn't know what it, they struggled with. You didn't know a whole lot about them. And so you genuinely or generally kind of saw them at their best or with the face or the mask that they put on. Inherently with my team, I take an approach of, yes, I still need to set boundaries but I need them to know what I'm thinking, what I'm struggling with, what I'm wondering, because I genuinely want input. I want feedback. I want an interactive place. And I'm not going to create a holiocracy, right? At the end of the day, the buck does stop with me. And I also don't need to be friends with everybody. I'm going to have to fire people or I'm going to have to lay down the law at times, but I need to show them a lot of different aspects of my true self. You having a company of your own, people that work both with you and for you, in turn with you and for you, however you want to describe it, how do you know what is right and what is wrong or how do you discern what aspects of yourself to show to them? How much do you disclose versus not? Or do you believe, no, I kind of take that traditional approach hierarchically if you're at this point in a, 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 a company and I know it's just contextual, let's not go, this is you you shouldn't disclose that much. Like, where do you go? Where do you personally stand with that in your own context, how much you let people in? Yeah. Um, what's a holocracy? Is that different from a holocracy? Is yeah. Like ho a holocracy oh, is oh like my God. everybody's got to dress like Buddy uh, Holly every day? Or yeah, like I mean, it could be. Ho no, well that, yeah, that's a good one too. It yeah. could be themed. We could do that. We could go places with I'm that. I'm going to start a holocracy. Yeah. If, if we didn't live in a PC We're only world, gonna I was going to give interns that look like Buddy Holly. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I think this differs, right? So let me turn this back. You want to show people in your company of four to five people sort of behind the curtain a little bit of some of the things that you're challenging or challenged by, some of the things that you struggle with. Like, so give me an example of what you're meaning there. Yeah, so for I'll, I'll give you a great example. One thing we did is um, what we always are trying to think of what provides the most value. And by the way, I'll, I'll give you a hot take too. I actually think running a four to five person team remotely in some ways is harder than people that run Fortune 500 companies that have a thousand employees or more. So I think that to have better conversations and for them to help... The us as a company, especially me, like us make better decisions. They've got to know more. They've got to know, hey, Brett, why do you, what do you seem not sure about? Why do you seem unsure? You know, what are you insecure about in this capacity if we choose to go this direction versus not? I have to speak my mind a little bit because otherwise I don't think that we can have that process of mutual decision making. Would this differ if you had instead of four or five, if you had 40 or 50? Yeah, I mean, I think you have different divisions then. So I think just the org chart would, would necessitate it as such. Well, right now, everybody in our company is involved in a wide range of decisions where, you know, you're going to have managers and directors that oversee their own teams. But still, I think I would do that. Let's say I had five divisions. I'd still do that with the lead of those five divisions. I think that you have to show a little bit of that. Yeah. I think that you have to, because the goal is, if it's really shared leadership and a mutual process, you have to think, Let's imagine there, there's one, two, three, there's four people in this room. If I said, guys, we have three options of where we can go. Yeah, there we go. I don't count myself. I'm talking to the people I'm talking to. If I said, guys, we have three options of where we could go here. Option A, option B, option C. Here's my thoughts and concerns about all of them. And I'm kind of between the lines on this. And this is why I'm nervous about, well, like, what are your thoughts? I think that, that that lends itself to more context as opposed to being weak or uncertain or whatever. You know, now there's shades of gray within that, but I think I'm being pretty clear on this one. I think I'm just, you know, it's, it's what do you, how much do you open up, share behind the curtain when you're running an organization? How much you, I'll be more specific to it. You have two interns right here. How much behind the scenes do you let them see? The good, the bad, the ugly at Altus. Yeah, it's, it's, that's changed a lot. And, uh, I'm a, I'm a believer in, again, 
if, if we're talking about this shared purpose or shared function of what we're doing, shared being the big part, and then all the component parts within that being able to communicate properly and pull in the same direction, they have to know what's going on. They have to, or yep. it's not going to be shared, right? Now, so that all of those gets to the point where we'll talk about whatever problems or whatever challenges we have, and the, the, the level is we just stop talking when we get to finances. That's it. That's a good. You, yeah. you, don't get, you don't get to know that part of it. <clears throat> yeah. But everything else that we're struggling with, that we're challenged by, you know, whether that be marketing or whether that be, you know, it's a, you know, we're dealing with athletes or working with athletes or teams or consulting or whatever that is. You know, over the last couple of years, obviously, the, all of our, you know, 99% of our challenges has come because of, of COVID. Sure. Because so much of our business has disappeared because of it. So we all know that. And all of, the, all of the staff know that, right? We have those conversations all the time. And now it's, it's the line kind of becomes a little challenging at that point because we can say, oh, man, this is getting rough. It's getting rough. It's getting really hard. It's, you know, with this loss, this loss. And they start worrying about their position and their job and, the, you know, the growth of the company, the sustainability of the company. So we, we have to be a little bit careful how we do have those conversations. But I'm a big believer, like you are, on letting them in, pulling the per curtain back, and they have to understand everything that's going on. I really do believe it.